Welcome back to the Belsonian podcast, your go-to podcast for all things engineering and coatings. I'm your host, Richard Bywater, and I will be joined today by our special guest, Mike Jones from Jones Marine Technologies, who will be talking to us about his experiences in applying surface or, impl- or applying surface tolerant products underwater. So what are surface tolerant solutions? Uh, A surface tolerant coating is a fluid substance that is applied to a metallic surface to help prevent corrosion. Surface tolerant coatings differ from regular coatings due to their suitability on surfaces that have been prepared with a lesser degree of preparation than commercial blast cleaning. They're specifically designed for in situ applications to damp, wet, oil contaminated or even underwater surfaces. The idea came from the field, the oil and gas industry, uh, in situations where grip blasting was either restricted or not an option. So a coating solution was needed which covered this type of scenario. This led to Belzona beginning to develop a surface tolerant coating grade uh, almost 20 years ago, back in 2003. So to discuss the practical application of this type of solution, I would like to introduce today's special guest. Mike, how, how are you doing? Uh, pleasure to have you on. Are you okay? I'm great, thanks. Yes, uh, keeping busy and uh, planning for our next works uh, in West Africa. Excellent. Okay. Um, I know you, you have, just before we kind of started, mentioned uh, the uh, the background. We, uh, are you liking our new studio? And I think it's it... rather smart, yes. yes. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think I should do something like this when I build my new office. Yeah. yeah, well, actually, just looking at your background, I don't think it's too dissimilar, to be honest. I think we've got the same, the same wood panelling, maybe. No, this is a, this is a uh, log cabin. Uh, okay, so, so where are you, actually, at the moment? Are you... In Fordingbridge, in Hampshire. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I, work, I work from this office simply because uh, we work uh, different time zones. I've got uh, guys in Brazil doing design work, guys in Miami and... Washington looking after wow. process procedures, guys Excellent. in Nigeria looking after site stuff for us, and uh, me here in the UK uh, trying to juggle. Right, okay. Keep it Sounds all going. A lot of organisation, I can imagine. I think for, for kind of context, um, if you could just introduce uh, uh, yourself, uh, your company, and, and just some of the, the type of work that, that you guys are, are doing globally at the moment. Well, my company, Jones Marine Technologies Limited, um, we look after uh, or work with companies who support the offshore oil and gas industry in Nigeria. We have done work in the UK and Angola. Okay. Um, and what we are uh, doing is looking after structures where they're starting to corrode, um, primarily okay. replace uh, coatings, um, fill corrosion pitting. And yeah. now we're getting to a stage where we're actually cutting out steel and uh, replacing steel on uh, FBSOs. Ah, I'll have to how long? Platforms. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So how, how long have you been doing this, uh, doing this type of work? Well, if we go back to BP Angola work, we've been doing this for 10 to 12 years now. Okay. Um, that's the, the offshore work. Um, yeah. And if we go to work in the North Sea, um, we can go back nearly 20 years now. Wow, okay. This is, but we're concentrating primarily on the warmer climates because I don't like the cold. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. You know, and, uh, and yeah. Working in Africa is so much more fun. Yeah, okay. So a lot of your work, obviously, uh, we've spoken a lot in, in the past. I, I know you very well. You do a lot of uh, kind of uh, underwater diving applications don't you and uh, so I suppose the difference between working the North Sea and, and the work in Nigeria is you know uh, quite noticeable. Temperature makes a quite a large difference when it comes to applying coatings. Um, okay. We've done some uh, coating work or trials as well in Newfoundland and Labrador where sea temperatures barely get above five or six degrees centigrade in the warmest time of year. And wow. as with any uh, paint, it, uh, it it doesn't stick well or, or even go off. Very, it's very cold, except for the new 
5831 low temperature, which Bell's ever produced now, I think primarily because of what we did in uh, Newfoundland. Okay. Um, West Africa gives us warm 28-30 degrees C temperatures where paint goes on with the right training and experience. Yeah. It probably is easily as putting a coat of emulsion in your lounge. Excellent. Is it, yeah, I can imagine the, the application process is, is, is a little bit different, but I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll touch on that in a, in, in a little bit. Um, so you mentioned uh, a couple of the, the Belzona products there. Um, Today's episode, we're, we're obviously discussing uh, surface tolerant products, mm -hmm. and, um, and and we've asked you to come on because you know you, uh, you you from a practical point of view apply a lot of these these products you know in the field. You've got a, a very good experience, a, a wealth of knowledge, and uh, many applications under your belt. So, what has the use of surface tolerant products um, given you and your business and and your customers? What it's allowed us to do is to work in places where you would never normally consider applying a, an epoxy or, or, or even paint. Um, okay. Submerged wet surfaces in engine rooms where you've got heavily pitted areas, um, external hull surfaces which are heavily pitted, which need yeah. filling before painting. And we're currently using uh, Belzona products of one one uh, or one triple one and one one six one, which is a paste grade material um, for bonding steel plates, uh, where we've got very thin areas on a sh uh, vessel's hull, and uh, on a couple of occasions uh, covering holes in ships' hulls, um, which give us time to prepare and come back and cut out the shell plate and replace it. Um, the coatings themselves, you really need to pre you prepare the surfaces properly yeah. uh, as per Bell's owner's instructions. Um, and when you suck that plate off on, don't expect to get it off because it's it, 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 you know, our clients go, oh, Mike, will this plate come off with the water pressure? You know, well, there, there, there is, if it's prepared properly, absolutely yeah. no chance of that plate coming off. You know, I go to sleep on board very comfortably knowing that it's been stuck on uh, yeah. with, with a high quality material yeah um, so ju just to be clear the, the the process that you're talking about is is all done underwater so it's uh it's not as if the the hull of the ship is is out in dry dock it's it's all kind of no the ship's uh, afloat the hull is underwater we prepare the uh, surface of the vessel's hull around where the hole is um we take it back to uh, bare metal we may, if there isn't already a profile on the on the, the bare metal, we'll add a profile using uh, a grinder or a bristle blaster type machine yeah. um, to give a profile. We need a we need a rough profile. The grinder actually works uh, incredibly well for doing that uh, yeah. process. You want a clean, ideally rough surface. Um, prepare. The surface and apply the coating immediately afterwards. The longer you leave it in between preparation and application, the more difficult it is to uh, get the coating to bond. And yeah. I'm, I, I'm not saying you know seconds afterwards. I'm saying 20 minutes, half an hour. And you yeah. wouldn't want to be sitting around for that amount of time after you've prepared any steel, even above water, before yeah. you put paint on it. You'd want to apply the paint straight or or, or epoxy or um, filler Im immediately. Yeah. Um, but it applies underwater, I would say, as easily as it does on the surface. And in some respects, we have tidier jobs done underwater because planning is critical when you're doing something underwater, getting things to people, mixing the right yeah. quantities, not overmixing. On the surface, you really have to watch out for people who don't who mix too much, who slap it on, or, or underwater, it's very controlled and very methodical. And yeah. uh, we're probably happier with, as happy with our underwater plates as we are with our surface plates. But when you look at our underwater plates, they look, uh, you know, they look perfect. The ones on the surface, yeah. there's always a little drip here and there, which just just makes the uh, the job less sightly. Um, yeah. Even when you use masking tape to prevent drips. <laughs> So, Excellent. Uh, 
but no, I would I would say both above and underwater, you're getting virtually identical results um, yeah. with the product. So, uh, so you mentioned that it goes on as as easy as it, well, obviously, if it's done uh, correctly and and with a and, you know a skilled applicator as, as yourself. Uh, what are some of the challenges in terms of uh, of the applications, or even just kind of extra considerations you kind of need to 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 have when doing that kind of work? Extra considerations of weather. Um, right, okay. Ideally, you want very little swell. Yeah. Um, you can do it. We attach ourselves to the side of the vessel using uh, magnets um, with a cup on either side, which basically stop you. Well, the diver can just hang there without thinning and trying to keep into position. So you can put effort into uh, what he's doing on the surface. You, know, you, you scrub the uh, product into the surface underwater as you do on the surface yeah. to ensure that you get right to the bottom of uh, any pitting or to the bottom of the profile. Um, the first coat of bell zone should always be scrubbed in in these instances, and then yeah. a thicker layer applied over the top um, to build the coat thickness. Um, underwater, we uh, you can get oils and uh, other thing uh, contaminations in the water, silt and things, but yeah. you just have to live with that and design your repair around what you expect. Um, if you're putting a plate inside a vessel where it's, everything is perfect you might go for a 100 by 100 plate if you're doing it underwater you'd go for a 200 by 200 plate on um, that way if there is any contamination on the surface that you haven't noted or your diver isn't necessarily as experienced as you would like him to be but chances are that holes don't appear when you want them to no um, so we'll always go for a slightly bigger plate and you're going to mix a pot of product anyway so you might as well use it yeah. And, and there's plenty in uh, a pot of bell zone of uh, 1111 or 1161 to do easily do a, a, a 300 by 300 plate. Yeah. Excellent. So, so you mentioned uh, kind of um, a temperature being you know extremely important at, at the start. What type of, of range of temperatures can, can you work in, in with these products? We have applied uh, Belzona 5831 in temperatures okay. down to 4 or 5 degrees centigrade wow, um, okay. on underwater blasted steel plate. Um, right. The product goes on, it, it wets out well, yeah. it goes on um, reasonably well, but it's 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 quite thick. Um, yeah. Ideally, heat the product before you take it down with you, but it loses its temperature very very quickly. You know, it, yeah. it's ideally taken down warm because uh, it wets out more easily the, the thinner yeah. it is. Okay. Um, and in Nigeria, we we're working in temperatures, water temperatures around thirty degrees. But when you're working on a, a the side of a vessel where there's cargo inside, the surface yeah. temperature can be fifty degrees centigrade. Wow. Um, and there the product goes on incredibly easily and quickly. Um, it even, even if you don't put a very smooth coat on it, it flattens itself out because of the temperature. Yeah. Well, we, we seldom ever get any sag, um, which is a, 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 a benefit, I think, the, these products. Some materials I've used in the past run, you get sag in them. These products don't sag. Which is which yeah. is nice. Where you put it, it stays. Um, so it's easier to build up a thick coating where it's thicker in the middle than it is on the outside. So when you press home a repair plate, the material sort of oozes out yeah. and around the edges. Um, so you know you've got a, a total hundred percent uh, bonded surface. Yeah. We always we always paint the plate with the same product just prior to applying it as well. So both sides, okay. the plate and the, the hull has been wetted out. So uh, just for the uh, the benefit of, of everybody who's currently watching on uh, on our YouTube channel uh, and, and seeing the visuals, but also if, if you are listening uh, in an audio format, we'll make sure to uh, to make a little show note with a link to the video on YouTube. But uh, Mike, uh, you've provided, uh, or you've done a, a video with us in the past, which 
shows uh, in great detail the, the types of applications that we're talking about here. Um, and I think it was this, uh, the hull repair in Nigeria that, uh, that you worked on using the surface tolerant coating that we've mentioned, I think 5831. Mm -hmm. 58, yeah, but yeah. uh, but you know, in fantastic visual detail, you can see uh, exactly how how easily this uh, this product goes on. So, why do your customers like using uh, a product like this on on their assets? What does it offer them in terms of value? In terms of value, um, often we're 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 painting large areas. Um, it's not all corrosion. Okay. Um, we're painting large areas simply because the existing coatings are delaminating. The anti-fouls come off. We maybe have, we've lost coat three on an international okay. product. Not all these coats are put on properly when they're uh, uh, painted on ships in, in, in yeah. foreign ports. Um, so we uh, prepare the, the areas where we have corrosion. We remove all loose coatings down to something which just isn't going to come off with a great okay. deal of effort. And that's where you leave it because you don't want to take off paint that's stuck stuck onto the side of the yeah. shell uh, shell plate properly. So we prepare all the area, we prepare all the corrosion down to nice shiny metal, and then we apply a coating uh, five eight three one over the entire yeah. area. This way, um, one it extends the life of the coating they've already got, which is very very important, and secondly. Uh, they don't have uh, corrosion spots which get uh, uh, deeper very, very quickly. A lot of these vessels in, in Africa and places, they have very limited cathodic protection. So as soon as you get exposed yeah. steel, you get excessive uh, uh, corrosion occurring. So you've got to pick these points up. You've got to uh, fill the pitting, paint them, and you've got to build up the coating yeah. in those areas. Lots of the areas on the vessel where we've cleaned, the anti foul is in perfect condition, but you get to some areas where, whoa, it's just coming yeah. off in sheets. So we just remove it all and put a, put a, put a coat of paint okay. on. Oh, well, I do have a picture which I could Please, show. Please, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 if, you, uh, if, you, if you're happy to. Um, if you just, yeah, I'll just, just, just stick this one up a minute. And, uh, if I can remember how to yeah. do it. Okay, so uh, everyone kind of on, on audio format, I'll just describe this. This is, oh wow, yeah. So this is a, a picture of, uh, I can imagine, is this you, Mike, or is this one of your, your dive team? No, this is one, one of our guys uh, uh, painting, or you can see the top left and, uh, area in that patch that the yeah. guy's working on. Um, there's a fairly large area where it's uh, corroded. Um, you can work your way down to where he's working. There's a few patches ab 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 above him and to the left. This is the primer coat uh, on, on the vessel. The stripe on the, the right-hand side is where he has already applied a coat of five, uh, 5831. Yeah. We apply the coating at about uh, 250 to 300 microns okay. per coat. We apply two coats. Um, we have found through experience that when the coating, and, and th this is really pain to speak, when the coating yeah. looks right, it's about 300 microns. When it looks a bit uneven, it's, uh, uh, it's probably well under uh, 250 yeah. microns. And then when it looks really very, very thick and ridgy, then it's over the 300. But if, if the diver uses his training and applies the coating yeah. correctly. Um, we regularly use a wet comb thickness gauge to check the yeah. coating thickness, but with practice, after you've done that 10 or 20 times in your painting uh, over an area like this, you know that you're gonna have 20, 250 to 300 uh, uh, microns of coating over the existing coating, which is well more than the, what was there in yeah. the first place. We always put a second coat on simply because it fills the troughs um, left behind. It's not a dead flat surface when we finish painting. And if it fills the troughs, then everything you're guaranteed to be uh, well over 300 to 400 microns when you've uh, completed the work. And that, that means all the, 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 the thin yeah. areas the guy uh, might leave. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> um, so far, on all the work we've done, we haven't had any holidays. Excellent. 
Now that that to me is a sign of correct preparation, application. The area you can see him painting okay. at the moment, um, it, there was a lot of preparation to get rid of all yeah. that marine growth. That's uh, that work there is about six okay. hours work. Wow. Okay. So uh, again, just for everyone on, on audio format, there's there are it's a diver uh, working on the uh, the hull of a vessel, and there's two quite large uh, areas, square areas, where obviously the the surface preppers has been done, and um, and yeah, you can really see the difference between the the prepared areas and and the uh, the the, the non prepared areas, if if you like. Um, one question that I do have, Mike, and uh, and as again for everyone on on the audio format, we will try and uh, with Mike's permission, of course, see if we can get this picture in a in a show note. Good, the editor's nodding at me there. I've got that right. <laughs> um, there, there are a couple of lines there that the uh, the diver has. Um, one of them, I, I think, is the uh, the attachment that we spoke about before. But is is one uh, so? How would you physically get the product from the surface down underwater for the for the diver to apply? Well, while we're uh, painting, I would say small okay. areas like this where we're detailing corroded yeah. areas, um, we use a pot of product. Uh, we mix up about a litre of product and it goes down to the diver in a, uh, a small, what we use, if everybody knows, being okay. paint <laughs> pot, pots where the applicator dips in. If we're doing larger areas where we can continually paint, we pump okay. paint down to the uh, diver using a pluricat, which ensures that he gets a fresh product out of the end of his, <coughs> uh, through his applicator constantly. Okay. Um, these areas are fairly limited, I would say, yeah. in size. Um, and to paint that area, he probably has about eight to ten pots of paint sent down to him, which as soon as one's sent to him, the guys start mixing the next okay. one, um, which guarantees it's fresh. You can see on the diver, on, on his left in this area, I'm not sure if you can yeah. see my pointer, yeah. we use a magnet which uh, just clunks onto the, the hull. It's about a 200 kilo. Uh, kilogram holding oh. force. There's a, 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 a rope which yeah. is attached to him. There's also a second magnet to his left. So any swell, he's kept in position. If he needs to push, and you can see the rope on the left is yeah. tight, um, it, it helps him locate yeah. himself. Running from the, uh, from the surface, there's a line which I'll trace with yeah. my pointer. This is what we call our down line. There's a shackle attached to it, which has got a light line attached to it. So the bucket clips onto that. The surface pulls the old bucket up. The, the new bucket just yeah. slides down. Over on the left-hand side here is a hydraulic rotary okay. tool, which we use to prepare the surface using a clean and strip, um, coarse grade. And that just hangs there. It's attached to the, the vessel with, again, a, a working yeah. magnet. Um, these working magnets have got a little neoprene pad on the front of them so they don't damage yeah. the coating, the existing coating and a newly applied coating. The, you know, people worry this will fall off but the, the hydraulic hoses are attached back at the dive vessel. But we haven't had anything yeah. come adrift in all the time we've been working, uh, doing this kind of work. Um, this It works. Yeah. The system works. Some divers come out with clean hands. Some. <laughs> Divers come out and you look at them and you think, you know, he needs a little practice. <laughs> but at the end of the day, some of the guys get in when they're painting and, and you're shocked by the incredible performance and quality yeah. of their work. Um, some divers don't paint quite as fast. So we slowly uh, um, build a team of guys who are very, very competent. Wow. So uh, how, you mentioned the team there. How many would be in a team for, a, for an application like this? We have a nine-man uh, team to okay. do this work. Um, we work to offshore uh, using IMCA okay. standards. Um, so we're, we're well equipped uh, diving-wise. We're well away from the shore. We're offshore. We always have um, two diver medics on board, decompression chambers on board the vessel we're working on. We actually have a fully qualified doctor as well and a small uh, 
hospital bed, theatre, yeah. whatever. Um, so we're well equipped working offshore. Um, we have uh, a crew supporting us um, of about 16 people who look after all the, the, the guys' daily needs, mooring, managing the vessels. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a very, very well run system. And we even have internet so you can keep close contact with your family and friends at home all the time you're working nice. away. Um, and just, uh, you know what, it's not the most uh, coating or engineering related question, but um, I'm looking there at some fantastic blue ocean. Do you encounter much wildlife or? I say wildlife. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, when you actually look at the vessel, when you're swimming down to it, there's almost a, a halo of okay. fish. Uh, uh, a foot to two foot away from the coral uh, which is growing on the vessel. Um, occasionally our divers will look, there's a, there's a barracuda looking at me and these things are three or four okay. foot long. Um, they like shiny things, we try not to have shiny things hanging okay. on the divers. Um, when we're using our rotary tools, every, I think things are interested, they're not uh, yeah. hungry, there's, there's so much to eat. Uh, already in yeah. these waters, <coughs> but, but the water visibility is is yeah. stunning. It's you you can you can see for hundreds of feet. I'll just pull up one. Oh more yeah, please do, mate. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Demonstrate some of the some of the, the clarity of uh, of the water, and you can see our straight edges. Yeah. I like to keep top and bottom. We we tend to follow uh, weld lines. It gives us the opportunity to check. Uh, coatings uh, on wells as well uh, which which is also important Brilliant. Um, and uh, one more for seeing the diver wow. magnets there's a few bubbles in the water um, we have a bit of swell okay. this day um, one thing with the bell zone the 5831 it's it's not a very runny okay. product so even if you have it in a pot it doesn't spill or come out or fall out if yeah. the bucket tips slightly if you held the bucket upside down it would slowly come out but uh, you know thankfully gravity prevents that when it's hanging on a, a, yeah. a rope so it reacts uh, well I mean it must be fit for purpose if you if you're putting it in a bucket and then applying it from that underwater but um, but yeah so mm. it, it remains uh, nice and quite viscous um, kind of you, know. you, you Yes, you get a pot life of about uh, okay. 20 minutes, 20, 20 to 25 minutes. Um, then it start. you get to a point where you go, oh, finish with this, I yeah. want a new pot, because you, you might have taken longer to do something and you thought, you can feel the product starting to uh, to, yeah. to go off. And as soon as you get to that point, you, it's discarded, it's returned to the yeah. surface. The pots are actually left so that the product cures yeah. in them. We don't try cleaning the pot out. When it's cured, you just bang on the bottom of the pot and a lump of paint falls out, you've got a clean pot to start the next day with. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, we, we try to be, and, and the product that was in the pot is is now, it doesn't get thrown over the side, it gets taken ashore for, for proper di yeah. disposal. But when it's, Bell's own products when mixed aren't environmentally right. hazardous. No, so um, we, we kind of touched on the, the value you can give to your, your clients by, by using this. What would be the, the alternative for them to, to do a repair such as this? The alternative uh, to what we're doing is, uh, is, is, is catastrophic to a business okay. almost. Um, we've got a vessel, this is a, a small vessel um, we're working on production rates, probably only a million barrels every seven weeks or six okay. or seven weeks. Um, to take this off station, to take it into a yeah. dry dock, to completely repaint it, you'd have to disconnect all your risers, your mooring yeah. systems. Um, you'd be out of production for probably three to okay. four months. Um, Yes, the vessel would go back in and you wouldn't have to do any work on it for uh, the next 20 yeah. or 30 years if you, you put a good coating on it. But 
our costs for what we're doing is a fraction of the product uh, productivity cost of the, the, you know, or the money that the yeah. vessel makes and to keep that vessel afloat and if we keep uh, as we do on other vessels looking at just the small corroded areas and um, we're also there looking after sea chests yeah. as well to keep uh, inlets and outlets on the vessel clear um, repairing uh, any corrosion that we find on the inlet grills um, this allows the vessel to stay on site for probably another 30 or 40 wow. years and, and is the vessel online when you're doing this work as well the vessel is the vessel is continuously producing uh, product this is an FPSO so it's a floating production and offload yeah. uh, vessel um, oil comes up from the, 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 the wells the gas the oil and the water and debris is separated yeah. from the oil um, all the time we're working so the vessel is going up and down in the water um, by 16 yeah. or 17 feet so your water depth, I mean, this, this area will be near the water surface um, when we start the job. And as you can see, uh, um, the diver's feet are resting on the bilge keel. Um, and, and, and this area will be 17, 18 feet um, when the vessel's fully okay. loaded. So, uh, no, the vessel doesn't have to stop work. Um, we continually work all the time the vessel yeah. is producing. Occasionally, we have to stop work if they have to off gas, if they flaring off uh, excess amounts of um, or burning off excess amounts of gas. Um, we get occasions when uh, supply vessels come alongside in the area we're working, so we have to disappear for an hour or so. And when we're taking on fresh yeah. water or, or stores, we tend to pull away. We don't like working anywhere near where. Uh, uh, a vessel is using dynamic yeah. positioning. In fact, we, we don't dive at all when a vessel is using dynamic okay. positioning. Our dive vessel moors alongside the uh, FPSO against fenders with bow and uh, uh, stern mooring ropes. Um, she's comfortable um, and allows us to dive all day without, without any problem. Uh, we can go back to the mother vessel for, for meals or the, the FPSO lowers down a basket with with the divers lunch in it so uh, we, we, we are, we're catered for very well um, but at the end of the day we're all here to do one thing is keep this yeah. boat uh, and vessels like it afloat with the minimum yeah. of interference to the daily uh, processes yeah. that would normally happen when we're not there. Excellent because I, I think it's an important point that you mentioned uh, it's uh, uh, the the alternative option you're weighing up against that kind of downtime the cost of the downtime the cost and the loss of production which you know compared to, to, to your repair method by the sounds of it is, is fractional so well it would run into hundreds yeah. of millions hundreds of millions and some of the vessels are producing a, a million barrels every two or three yeah. days and we we we, we we work on those so it, it, it just can't be considered uh, taking the vessel out of production just can't really yeah. well, it can be considered but it would be uh, yeah. catastrophic um, to, to business whether you'd even get a well started again um, no we, we we're here to keep these boats afloat we can cut if that was a, a, a totally uh, corroded uh, plate below class thickness we could we can organize to have that yeah. plate cut out and replace we also do wow. that work so we'll do shell work uh, shell plate inserts and again all those plates all the welding that would be done would need to be uh, protected with uh, uh, yeah. bell zona as well great mike be, uh, before we we kind of come to to the end of the interview, one thing that we, we like to do when we uh, when we get someone like like yourself on um, is just find out if if you have any particular memories, any particular applications that, that stand out when you've been using Belzona products that, uh, that that you feel you know is is worthwhile mentioning or you know particular fond memories. Some I won't mention, but I can't. <laughs> okay. 
We also do work. We also do work for the Michigan Okay, Fems. cool. Um, so they they were fond yeah, memories. We won't mention that, um, don't worry. <laughs> but but here we we uh, where a client has actually said to us, oh, we need to uh, remove this and get rid of this now, or we need to replace all this steel work um, for like inlet grills. That the, these vessels don't steam along. They don't need the impact resistance to inlet grills that a, a vessel that's doing 15 yeah. knots does. So where we have um, badly corroded or uh, uh, inlet grills, we actually use the uh, Belzona 1111 to build up the thickness of some of these uh, uh, members. And the clients like, but Mike, you, you, you could have changed these. And I'm going, well, have you, know, have you ever tried getting one of these grills out <laughs> when it's underneath a vessel when you actually don't need to? You can prepare it back to bright, shiny steel, build up the, yeah. the thickness. You have now stopped corrosion. And you've now got a, a grill which will last you another 20 years. Um, and it's taken a day. Yeah. It hasn't taken two days to get the grill out. Uh, a day's worth of welding with hot work permits and everything on board and another day or two to reinstall and, and change all the bolts. So there are huge savings to be made. Now, yes, changing the grill would be much better for us yeah. financially. But the, the, the way we do our work is we don't, what we do is we look at value yeah. to customer. We, we have to demonstrate that what we're doing provides the most economic way of doing the work. And by doing this, it gives us so much more repeat work. Um, the guys we have on board painting at the moment are still there. We're, we're doing other work. We've, we've been in, on this vessel for nearly, you know, for, for quite yeah. a few years now. Um, and it's ongoing maintenance. And our only interest is in keeping this vessel in uh, prime condition because in doing that it, it just generates work for us in a lot of yeah. other areas because the, we're giving this client good value for money and all he can say is you know, so far is good things about us and we haven't you know t to me the uh, the grill example just you know it was three hours work i think to prevent possibly a week's yeah. worth of work um, and in, in Africa finding the right steel to replace all your uh, bars in a, a, um, is not the easiest of thing and class were quite happy with just building up um, thickness with a product which is far more durability than uh, the steel will ever have excellent but working smart <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah I suppose you could look at it that way it's being it's 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 having one of those it's it's nice to be able to work when you, at the end of the day you can go i really have looked yeah. after the customer excellent mike um, absolute pleasure thank you so much for uh for for giving us a, a bit of an insight into to the work that yourself and and, and jones marine i'm sorry it is jones marine isn't it sorry jones, jones marine. marine jones marine technologies Brilliant. everybody refers to us as JMT, JMT. Nigeria. Well, thank you very much for giving us a bit of an insight uh, into to the work that you do and the work that, that Jones Marine Technologies does as well. It's uh, it's been excellent, and you know, I hope hope you've enjoyed it. Yes, I have. Thank you. And uh, you know, should anybody want any support, we're not necessarily going to offer you our services <laughs> um, because we are quite busy. But we're always there. If you've got a, if you have a problem on site, if you have a question to answer, go back to Belzona, and uh, if they can't answer it, they might come to me, and I'll be just as happy to uh, to assist in any way whatsoever. Um, but uh, yeah, Mike, thank you very much. No, oh, great. Well, that about wraps it up for today's episode. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please remember to like, follow or subscribe so you do not miss out on any future content. You can find us as always on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify or YouTube. Uh, if you want to get in touch uh, with questions, feedback or alternatively, or alternatively even, 
Um, if you want to put in suggestions for you know future episodes, uh, you can now do so on our new email address, which is podcast at bellzona.com. Uh, any questions on anything we've discussed today or anything Belzona related in general, uh, you can go to our website, www.belzona.com. Uh, and finally, just want to say thank you very much to our guest today, uh, Mike Jones from uh, Jones Engineering. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys for listening. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.